Welcome back. Before getting to the topic of this video, I'd like to point out, in online meetups and the like, it's customary to give the audience a group label appropriate to the topic of interest. Since here we're discussing how misty states are useful for learning quantum computing, it seems natural to refer to ourselves as, well, Mysterians. In the previous introduction video, we declared our straightforward goal with the Misty States Canvas you're looking at, namely to bring you up to speed on quantum computing by using the very simple process of balls falling through gates and using no more than high school math to manipulate those items and predict their outcomes. We also acknowledged in the previous video the source of this graphical approach. The book, Q is for Quantum, by Terry Rudolph. So, preliminaries complete, let's jump into how to use the straightforward objects on this canvas to create the instructions used by both classical and quantum computers. Starting on the top, observe how the top row is segmented. Asides for the instructions under Start Here, the second of which you're watching now, are four sections, operations, balls, classical states, and misty states. Starting on the left with operations, let's walk through each of them. This is where you run the gate operations once you've set them up. Of course, nothing's on the canvas now, but in a minute there will be and then you will need the straightforward start, stop, replay capabilities. Next, let's discuss what balls are all about. Obviously, there's two circular objects whose destiny is to pass through the various gates coming out either the same or switch colors. To get them onto the canvas, simply drag and drop, like so. And to remove them, right click. By the way, those two operations, drag and drop and remove, are true for any object on the top row. Notice when I drag and drop an object, it ends up in the middle of the square. However, let's point out in the present canvas, is a work in progress, so occasionally an object does not end up in the square you expect it to land in because of the present sensitivity of the canvas grid. No big deal. Simply move it to where you want. The next version will eliminate this occasional frustration. Also note, as expected, once a square is occupied, no other object will be placed into or on top of it an already occupied square. Okay, that's all there is about balls. There are two types, white and black. They appear on the canvas by dragging and dropping, and they disappear by right-clicking 